as Yorkshire Live talks about, the they said they were quoting the fans forum talking about season tickets, and Chan Siri went quite defensive at this point, and you could tell that this is one thing that he got really passionate about. He was talking about the fact that he always tries to be fair. One of the fans says it's disgraceful, you know, the, the season ticket prices mm. for where they are at. There's a lot, I know we've had a debate topic on this, there's a lot we have talked about around this subject, about the fact that we think that, you know, we, Jack, you and me played other side, the opposite sides of this coin. I will probably say now that I think if you wanted a season ticket, you'd have probably bought one. At the, mm. You know, I do think the early bird is a little bit too early because of where it is, mm. but there is there is arguments for everything. There's arguments for, oh, well, why do fans need to find out what league they're in before they buy season tickets? But the, the one thing that I keep coming back to, and the first thing I want to talk about this when we're talking about it, is the fact that why is it, and this is the question that was glazed over and never talked about, why is it not comparable to all the other clubs in our division? Why are we the exception? And that's yeah. the one thing that, yeah, I understand we're losing money, but why are we the exception? Why do we have to be the exception? And why is there not a clear answer on that? Because every club must be in the same boat. So why do we have to be different? Jake, start us off. I think we've still got a situation where we have an owner who still thinks he's right and this is the way it should be. And I've always said it from the day everything started going a bit badly. He needs to have a chairman and then have an owner and be an owner, not do it all. I think he needs someone to go, this is what it is. It's like, we do these surveys. Do they even get looked at? Like, literally, Mm. do they get looked at or is it just a a bridging gap to see where we are? And the problem is, if these surveys are going to actually help, then great. But then when he said, I'll... When he turned around and said he said to the journalist was, right, please put this out here. If I sell season tickets at £400, I will refund everyone the 400 has already done it. The math doesn't add up. We can't have 30,000 people in there anyway. You would right, be I want to talk with... about that sep- I want to talk about that separately because no, that's a no. big claim that he made there. No, but it goes into the season ticket thing. It yeah. does go into the season ticket thing because... The ways of doing it, like if you have season tickets at 400, you're going to sell more quicker than the, and yes, I understand having the early bird and people pay less, but the early bird would just have the Christmas, won't it? People yes. don't have money yeah. there. Yeah, and I think I, the, I, the counter argument is the finance package at zero interest there. But again, it's mm. sort of like the time that people probably aren't thinking about the amount of expense. And if you're thinking about families, it, it, it does rack up, doesn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Jack? Mm, yeah. I, it's just, it's a frustrating thing because I think at times the chairman's got this bullheadedness and he won't listen to other people and he won't, he always, he's, he's got like, it's like Jake said, he's got this sort of attitude where he just, he know he, in his head, he knows that he's doing it the best possible way, but that's probably what a lot of football chairmen think. And he, he, he seems to what think that we're some exception sometimes and not actually concede, oh, maybe this other club is doing something in a better way. Let's emulate what they did, which ironically is possibly what he's got in his head about how Luton have just got to the Premier League, that they didn't spend very much to get up there. And yet there's other aspects where he's going, well, no, we're an exception. We're... And then it's later on he sort of says that, you know, I took I took a purposeful loss because I feel like we, like it's my fault that we got there and stuff. Rather and and the whole forum there was there was a weird vibe that he was giving off about it was it's me versus all of you, rather than yeah. we're all in this together. It, and I, this I, felt think, a bit I think like I that think again. when we inferred that we're reading it, aren't we? And it's a case we're reading of, it and uh, yeah. I, I think he's willing to listen. I do think he's willing to listen to have that conversation, but he he obviously has to do that through, you know, sort of like a bit of a broken language barrier. It's very difficult when you're trying to present the argument there. I think the big thing that a lot of people are missing is the fact that it's the match day prices that are caused by this, okay? Yeah. It's rumoured or something we've sold around 20,000 season tickets, isn't it? And I know a lot of those were done at early bird. So ah, No, a lot of them were done with people trying to get tickets for Wembley. Yes. Yes, that as well. People trying yeah, to get through exactly. the loophole of, oh, next year's season ticket holders can get tickets earlier. 
uh, for Wembley yeah. and stuff. So loads of people bought a season ticket with no intention of going next year, at the, you know, with the season ticket. Just there is a reality, again. right, where I think it's the individual match day prices that are the concerning ones because then you end up like looking like 40, 40 quid tickets, you know, and yeah. ticket rises. And that's the problem. If you do have a lot of season tickets on the cheap, people who want to just go will be paying a fortune to meet the quota. And what, what we've got now is we've got the worst of both worlds, expensive season tickets and expensive pay on the day managed, matches. Yeah. 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 So it's sort of like, and that's because he's trying to cover all loss bases by if he can get in a few thousand of the people paying on the gate, that will compensate for the fact that he sold tickets at what he deems as a low price at early bird. Mm. But then it's sort of like, he makes this outrageous claim that he will drop every season ticket to 400 quid if he sells 30,000 of them. Which is one of those things that that almost... For me, that's weird because it almost eliminates anybody paying... That could backfire because people will buy them for the sake of it and that's fine financially. That will support the club. But it sort of eliminates people paying on the day and think because we our capacity has been cut severely as well. Yeah. It's... I, li- I like the sentiment behind that, but do you think that's sort of just something that's probably said out of passion, maybe, at the time when he was on the defensive? I, and I think the problem with this fan forum in its whole was he hasn't done one for five years, let's put it that way. And he wanted to get everyone questioning. He was very na- nice about it and saying, this is what it is. And I think if he's going to want to do fan forums again they have to be once a month but they need to be done into sections of 10 people or 20 people not a massive room of 50 or 60 where i think you'll get a better wider range of questions where it's more concise instead of everyone trying to have a say does that make sense and again i think some of it was down to broken english and and i I, it would be nice for him to have just a translator for the one where he's struggling to understand the actual question. But I think I think the whole situation is that he's so... You can tell he's so looking to recoup losses and stuff like that. But again, if you're a business owner, you take on those losses. We are a business. We are not a charity. I know people I hate this term and in, in business... We are the he the con he's the person that owns it. He's the person who's looking after the club for us. Let's put it that way. But he still owns it. He's the one still paying the staff. He's the one still paying the electric. He's the one paying this. And yet, if your overheads are too expensive, we need to be finding ways to bring them down. Like the LEDs on the on the roof is finally happening. If he's going through with like putting um, solar panels on, that'll help. They are looking at ways, but you can't keep it going back to us. You have to take, not responsibility, but also accept that it's a business. Businesses lose and make money. Football businesses massively lose money. And I don't think he still grasped that it's a football business and not a normal business. Mm. Jack? See, I'm also in a sort of camp where, and I'm putting, I'm really putting my tin hat on for this as well, just to bring it back to this this claim he made sure it was in passion but i just don't think the fan base would do it anyway like i'm sorry to say that i know there's many loyal supporters but i just don't think that 400 pounds or not i just I, it doesn't feel at the minute like they would even do that they just like to be backseat critics and i know it's very rich saying that that i don't go to a lot of games and i've openly admitted that but and i'm looking to go to more games in the future but I can't physically go and get a season ticket because I don't have the time to go to a lot of games, so it's pointless me getting one. But those that can get one just don't because they prefer to be this sort of, like, backseat critic of the club rather than saying, yes, I'm actually going to get... Like, for example, I just don't think they'd follow through with saying, oh, yeah, well, I'd get that if you did that, Mr. Chancery. I don't think they'd follow through with it. There's a lot of fans. Yeah, and I'm happy I, to lay I, down I, that do, gauntlet, I do have that side of it. I do feel like I just, that's, that's even if he did say, accurate. "Look for this season, I'll I'll be a man of my word." Season tickets, four hundred quid, go get them. And I don't think men, as many people would get them, so it would just prove his point about why they need to be a certain price. But 
I'm happy to be wrong. Please make me wrong. But I just sort of feel like our fan base wouldn't still still wouldn't go for it because they like to criticize rather than show a bit of impetus. Mm. Because if so they didn't the like how it was being run, that nobody would buy a season ticket or a ticket. But they still do. So it's just this weird. <sighs> He's thrown down know. a gauntlet now by saying basically. I'm doing the maths on it, right? And he's basically saying that we need to make 12 million a year yeah. on, on gate receipts because he's just said 400 pounds for 30,000 tickets, 12 million a year, right? Yeah. Take, I'm doing like an average of the early bird prices now because the early bird prices um, at the uh, the cheapest for an adult on the cop were 395, North Stand 485, um, five three five. This is not an accurate um, average, but it'll be closer. I've probably been a little bit conservative on this one. Let's say four hundred and fifty pound the average season ticket. Okay. Mm. Um, actually, no, because there'll be kids in there and under twenty five. So let's say, let's do it four hundred because then that averages it out over the top. Okay. And then yep. we take that and we say we sold the eighteen thousand of them. We'll forget the the people on the mad rush, right? That means that we make around 7.2 million off the early bird season tickets, which leaves us with about 5 million to fetch. Now, if you have tickets and they sell for an average of 36 odd quid, you're making around 3 million for the home matches. So you are making 10 million, which just falls short. So he is, if if we only sell early bird season tickets, we're not reaching that 12 million target. But you would think... We probably are over the course of it, which is why he's got his current pricing structure. Yeah. If twelve million is the target, there's probably there's probably more incentives to do that, and and it might be finding a middle ground of it. Because how many tickets? Let me just think. Here, twenty. So say tickets are twenty five quid, right? How many home matches do you have in a season? So there's a, it's a forty six game season, isn't it? It's 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23 yeah so um let's say we get if it drops to 25 quid a game let's say five thousand people pay okay on the gate that's three that's that's 2.875 so we need to up that so yeah i understand what he is saying in terms of prices if it is at that but you would assume that we made a bit more cash flow with the Wembley people buying season tickets, people buying them at full price. There is arguments for for it, but like if we could, if I'm just seeing if there is a way where we could the raise. The question is, has that money already gone on uh, at Spencer's? The thing is, yeah. we don't know what our expensive, how much things they're paying each week every month the magic number is thirty thousand, i think fans in the door because the way i was looking at it there if you dropped it to 25 quid as the average of a ticket you would basically you would make near to six million over the course of the season which if we just sold eighteen thousand at early bird prices would get you over that target right of 12 million that he has set with that I reckon we have yeah. sold more. I reckon we're around, I think I think I've been reading that we're around 21. So that means some people who have paid top whack in there as well. So if that is the case, he could lower it. We don't have to be charging wouldn't a full Hillsborough at 25 pound a ticket, you know, a reason I'd say that's reasonable for a match ticket, right? Not yeah. the 30 plus that we end up with. You could you could try and and the fans would then have to turn up. It would be a case of do you you want thirty thousand in there every week. You so so around eight to ten k pay on the days. Mm. I reckon that would be more of an incentivized place. What were you going to say, Jack? Well, what it's it's like a it's a broader term that really does link into the gate money and into the season tickets. But why the f- are we relying so much on gate receipts and season tickets as the prime income of the club? What about sponsors? Why can other clubs in the league get these, sure, they're gambling companies or alcohol companies or whatever, They, but they're obviously paying more. But why are we getting these little niche, little very rarely known companies to be our main headline sponsors and stuff and partners when 
they're clearly not giving us as much money as so many other clubs sponsors are and why why can't we look at other revenue streams why is it all just on the f gate receipts all but the Jack, time to get all this money per year and yes i use the I, censor button so I, I, I do yes but i, I, do. I hope it i hope it worked because <laughs> you sent me different I do, audio feeds i do understand that with the uh saying this but you just mentioned alcohol and gambling right gambling on shirts and stuff is going to be gone soon and you mm. can't sell a kid's shirt with gambling or uh, that on the shirt. He's he's very determined to get this certain match day revenue because that's directly from the fans for the actual match day experience, isn't it? And that's specifically yeah. in ticketing prices. And what I would like to propose, and people seem obsessed with refunds. I'm not talking about refunds. I think if we overhauled the membership scheme... This isn't a, this is something that I think we could actually profit from. Because if fans are obviously upset about ticket pricing, what if we had a membership scheme where you bought the membership, but then over the course of the season it was a percentage based discount, and the more you went, the ho the higher your percentage went. So say the tickets start at normal pricing. You buy a membership, you get the initial £5 discount that's in there, but then you can get like up to 25% off or, or something mm. like that, or even higher percentages. The more you are going and the more you are putting money into the club with those match day tickets. What if we, we did that? So people were building priority points, but they were also building a percentage-based discount. So the people who are the people that go all the time, and he talks about getting people through the door and having people there and showing up, they ended up getting more of a reasonable ticket. So by the time the percentage could end up bringing it all the way down to something like 20 quid a ticket, which is what it works at, which is what it works out at a lot of season tickets, you know? So why, why don't, and, and say your membership, do you know when you shop with somewhere and they give you like silver gold memberships and yeah. things like that, and you get a discount that lasts for like two years once you've built a certain level. If we did stuff like that, that would be beneficial. I think that's a way to overhaul the membership and get more people who don't want to commit to a season ticket, but actually, if you look at it on the back end, people will think of that as less an of an investment than just buying a season ticket. They'll yeah. think, well, oh, well, I'm building up these points. I might as well go to this match because it gets me to the next tier. That That's sort of the thing. whole point of priority point for tickets that we got yes. already. And if you include that in a different way, it, that should work.